Hey guys, sorry about the exposure on this video. I think that there was something wrong with the settings on my camera when I actually recorded it, but hopefully I fixed it. There was obviously something going on because some of my live streams are also a little bit distorted with the coloring and the kind of auto white balance that was set up there, but it does look a little bit weird. I apologize for that. And I think I fixed it kind of moving forward. So hopefully that goes away. At last, my love has come along. Hey everybody, Ken Walsky here, checking out our hashtag Lower Decks episode review discussion videos. Of course, today we're going to be talking about the finale episode of season one of Lower Decks. And boy, was it a doozy. I mean, this episode was amazing. It had the jokes. It had the, the emotional tears. Sex! And we had great cameos. We had the freaking Titan, which we'll get to. And of course, we had just a fantastic cap off of the whole season gearing us up for season two. Let's jump into this. So those of you who know me know that I do love Lower Decks. I've kind of guessed about it for about 10 videos now. And I just thought that this season finale was a perfect way to really just round off, in my opinion, right now as the best first season of any Star Trek show, period. That's right. I said it the best first season of any Star Trek show, period. You can put that, you can just take that to the bank and cash it. That's a fact. There is no better first season in my personal opinion. This was a fantastic season. The last three episodes, really the last four, so eight, nine, and 10, which is technically still just three because I know how to count. But the last three episodes of this season were really, really fantastic. They nailed down the, you know, the whole entire situation there with the crew of the Lower Decks, the bridge crew, narrowing down the references, the jokes, the plots, the stories, keeping it entertaining. All of these last few episodes have been absolutely fantastic, and they just capped it off beautifully in this one by really raising the stakes. And they did it almost immediately with, I think it was Captain Dayton of that new style Cerritos style ship, the California class style ship that had the plastic on it and stuff like that. They all died. Their ship exploded. Very serious, very, very real moment there that was kind of, you know, played up for like laughs at first and then got very serious. And then, of course, it was kind of played for laugh later because it was the Packlebs that did it. It was this whole thing. Really interesting there. Definitely raised the stakes. But of course, we had, you know, kind of other emotional stakes that happened, which hasn't really happened all that much throughout the season. So it was interesting that they decided to pull out a couple of those emotional punches like that in this finale. And I, I thought it was great. Honestly, overall, the episode itself was just fantastic. I really did love it. It was really just a perfect cap off to a, an amazing the best first season of any Star Trek show. Okay, so let's talk about a couple of things that did happen. Obviously, Shax died, or so they say. I don't believe he's actually dead. I think he's gonna come back somehow. My current theory is that the Packlets beamed everybody off of that ship, because remember, there was three other Packlet ships around the area before that one actually got blowed up. So I think that they beamed everybody off of there, and then he's kind of on there. Maybe he's hiding out. Maybe he's wearing one of the little hats to kind of blend in. I don't know, but I don't think he's dead. That's just my personal opinion. I know Mike McMahon has said that there's going to be a new tactical officer well, that doesn't necessarily mean that Shax isn't coming back or that they're not going to do like some kind of joke with that there or whatever that is. So I, I don't think he's dead, but that did happen. That was very serious. Another big important moment is that Boimler got promoted and went over to the Titan. So obviously at the end, the Titan swoops in, saves the day. Beautiful. Well done. They had Jonathan Frakes come back with Marina Sirtis playing their, you know, their iconic characters of, you know, Captain William Riker and Commander Deanna Troy serving on board the Titan, which is now officially Alpha Cannon. Thank God for that. It's only been like, I don't know, feels like a hundred years, but thankfully Alpha Cannon has caught up. The Titan design is Alpha Cannon now, so congratulations to everybody involved there. But they came through, saved the day, and Boimler got transferred over there, and he got promoted, which was pretty much everything he's ever wanted. So he's on the ship that he wants, he's working with the badass captain that he idolizes, and he's on a, on, he got a promotion, and he got his own private little room now. So he's got pretty much everything he wanted. But, you know, it was kind of interesting the way that they left it off between him and Mariner because she was apparently leaving him a bunch of voicemails and she was very upset about him leaving. And he's kind of ignoring it. So we'll see how that kind of plays out. But speaking of Mariner, she decides at the end of this episode and really the end of the season that throughout her arc throughout the season was she kind of didn't want to do anything with authority and didn't want to really move up in the world. And now she's kind of like, you know what, maybe working with my mom and kind of using my talents and her talents together 
to you know protect the ship and do a lot of great cool Starfleet stuff is better than just fighting all the time and constantly getting into arguments. And so they decide to work together at the end of the episode, which I can't wait to see. I kind of actually want to see a little bit more of the cool mother-daughter dynamic there where they're actually kind of working together as opposed to always kind of being bumping heads. I think that would be kind of a little bit of a twist on that, you know, the trope of it's, you know, mom being overbearing or whatever, and we actually see some of the growth between the two of them. So I can't wait to see that in season two, but that's kind of like how her arc ended a little bit towards the end of the season, which was great. Uh, the, obviously, you know, Rutherford kind of had like a weird arc where his mind got wiped because he lost his, you know, little, uh, his little uh, Android attachment piece there. So his cybernetic, you know, attachment piece there. So his memory got wiped or it may come back, it may not, but so he's kind of basically a brand new character at this point going into season two. And then Tendi is kind of in the exact same space, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because not everybody is going to be kind of, you know, growing, I guess you could say. I think the only kind of growth that she had throughout the season is at the beginning, she was kind of a fish out of water character. And now she seems to be in a position where she's got them, you know, you know, kind of got the, the rules of what's going on in Lower Decks. And she's going to now be reintroducing Rutherford into their lifestyle. So it kind of is a little bit of a flip in that regards, but she didn't do too much growth there. Obviously, the big thing that she did inside this episode was hang out with, what is it, Peanut Butter Hamper or whatever it was, the Exocomp character, which I love. I can't believe they brought the Exo comps back, but that was really fantastic. And I like how it definitely was like, I'm not dying for your organics, which is such an Exo comp thing to say, because that is such an Exo comp attitude, you know, it's just a maturation and a, a, you know, a lower dexified version of the Exo comp attitude from the TNG episode. So I love that. That was great. But Obviously, the main bridge crew characters didn't really kind of get any arcs, quote, you know, quote unquote, but we're not really following the show in that regards for them. We're kind of just, they're kind of like background supporting characters to our Lower Decks folks. So a lot happened to our Lower Decks team, and there's a huge setup for what happens in, you know, Lower Decks season two. Now, what's interesting is that Mike McMahon during the New York Comic Con panel did straight up say that we are not just going to completely undo everything that happened at the end of season one. So that means that they're gonna, we're gonna be, he confirmed that we're gonna see more of the Titan, which probably means a bit more of Riker, and that Boimler that probably isn't gonna just be kicked back to the Cerritos by, through a demotion. I would personally like to see a situation where Boimler, you know, talks to Riker and is like, I need to go back to the Cerritos. That's where my family is. That's where my heart is. I, I wanna go back there. And Riker's like, yeah, dude, I totally get it. That makes sense. I spent way too much time on the Enterprise because that's where I loved being and that's where my family was. And I turned on all these commands just to stay there. So he'll transfer him back there. And they have maybe have like a really good heart to heart moment about, you know, kind of growing as an individual and as a Starfleet officer. I hope that they do something like that. And it's not something like, you know, I don't know, he, you know, breaks Riker's, you know, musical jazz instruments or whatever. Give me a warp speed and a five, six, seven, eight. So yeah, I hope that something like that happens. That would be great. And then he kind of comes back to the Cerritos and then he has to make up with Mariner and kind of prove himself as her friend again and kind of get back into the Lower Decks crew. But I actually continue, want, I want them to continue to, you know, promote. I want them to continue to get better and better, you know, in terms of rank and skill levels and stuff like that. You know, and kind of let the crew kind of continue on. And maybe just the Lower Decks lifestyle is just kind of like a phrase. They don't literally exist in the Lower Decks anymore. And so we'll see how that kind of ends at the end of season two, where our characters kind of go off. If they don't get a season three or four renewal, I think what we'll probably get is kind of like a what happened to them after the show ended kind of thing at the end. I don't know. I just feels like something that would be what Mike McMahon would do to be like, and Boimler became the laziest Starfleet officer. And this is how, you know, and Mariner became this and Tendi did this and Rutherford did that. You know, I feel like that might happen. So it'll be interesting to see how they kind of continue to mature through season two and Hopefully we'll get a three or four, but if not, then I think we'll get a good, you know, resounding cap off with, you know, the, you know, the finale of season two. But we'll get a long time to get to that. We've got a year and 10 weeks to get to that because I assume it'll probably be a year before the thing even comes out again. Maybe sooner. I don't know. But uh, I really am just excited to see the second season now because I really want to find out what happens to these characters. I really love this crew quite a bit. I love this show a lot. And I, I honestly can't say enough positive things about it. You know, I think even most people who have finally given this show an opportunity and actually watched it realize that, hey, this is actually... It's actually pretty good. And I think that's also why some of like the um, the hater channels or whatever actually stopped reviewing it in some regards. I think it's just because they realized that it's not really good to kind of, you know, shit on the show that people actually like. So they avoid this one and now they're kind of focusing on the other shows still. So I don't know. We're about to have another 
13 weeks of discovery for everybody to crap all over. So, you know, everyone's going to forget about Lower Decks in a couple of weeks. I won't, though. I've got my badgy shirts. I'll remember it forever, and I cannot wait for season two. Anyways, guys and gals, that does, of course, wrap up kind of like my little overview piece here and kind of my theories piece. I'm kind of just gushing and rambling on right now. Everybody and their mother has talked about this episode already. I've gone several live streams already talking about this episode in depth, but I did want to go ahead and get a recorded video out for us to kind of have our own little private Kitwalski chat, you know, over here about some of the theories and likes and dislikes. So this is just really me, just me kind of like talking a little bit about the show. Uh, I, I really just want to hear what you guys think. Final thoughts of this episode here and really of the season. I'm probably going to do a full season recap. I'm hoping to get a special guest for the full season recap, but we'll see about that. So that may come out a little bit later than I may have wanted, but uh, it's worth the wait, hopefully, if I can make it work the way I want to. So, you know, so I'm going to do a full season recap, but I do want to just hear, what do you guys think about this? What do you think about this episode? What do you think about the rest of the season as a whole? I, I want to know. Get your stuff up down below. Get your comments up down below. And, you know, let's go ahead and get that conversation started. And while you're down there, if you enjoyed this video, please throw a like and a subscribe up on the channel. It absolutely helps out the channel very much, and it allows you to stay up to date with all the most current Star Trek news, reviews for television shows, and hopefully the movies, and much, much more. So I can't wait to get the conversation started with you guys down below, and I'll see all of y'all next time. Live long and prosper, my trickies!